Welcome everyone. Thanks for being here today with us. We have with us Mike Carlo, Microsoft MVP, who will be presenting his session about Charticulator. Together with me is uh, Ricardo, who's behind the scenes, uh, and we will be reading your questions, publishing them, and reading them to Mike. This is a Teams Live event, so you can post your questions in the panel to your right, and we will be passing them to Mike. As usual, this is uh, uh, the QR code to reach our user group, and these are the QR codes to reach our social media platforms. Uh, we will post the recordings, uh, the recording of this session to our YouTube channel, and you can keep uh, updated on the next events uh, using LinkedIn and Meetup. Uh, we have uh, updated our uh, report in which uh, there are uh, the pills we are making. We're making new DAX pills in Italian, and we have uh, uh, a huge list uh, of all the Power BI installers in case you need an old version of Power BI. You can find them all uh, in the report here. The next webinar, uh, the next roundtable actually, will be with uh, Roberto Capancioni, the 18th of May. It will be in Italian and it will be about um, uh, a comparison between Power BI and Oracle Apex. If you have a session, uh, a success story, or anything you would like to share with us, please uh, uh, contact us, uh, uh, direct message us on our social media. We're very happy to host you, even if it's not uh, uh, an hour, uh, uh, hour long webinar. It could be a 30 minutes round table or anything you'd like. Thank you very much. I leave the stage to Mike. Thank you, Mike, for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Let me share my screen and I'll, I'm gonna do just a little bit of introduction here around our topic today, which is called Charticulator. I get very excited about data and things. So if I get too excited, please let me know, throw a comment in the chat window, slow down. I have a question. Go over that again. Let me know because I get really excited. And when I get excited, I go fast. So I'll try and stay calm and give you guys a good presentation today. Awesome. So uh, thank you very much for the introduction. I really appreciate it. Um, looking forward to doing this one today for you. My name is Mike Carlo. I am going to be talking about Charticulator, which is it's it's a custom visual, but you don't have to write code to make the custom visual work. So Let's get into it. Before I do that, I'll do a brief introduction here and go to my next slide. This is me, uh, Mike Carlo. This is when I had a beard uh, back in the day. Uh, my wife doesn't like it, so I got rid of it. So uh, here we are. I like this picture. It's a good one. I'll, I'll keep it. So I run the website powerbi.tips. So if you have been around the internet and you search for things related to Power BI, there's likely a time where you've stumbled on one of the articles or, or something that has been produced from Power BI Tips. So I run that site with Seth Bauer and I, and I, and we just put out free training content, tips and tricks that are around Power BI. That's on the site. I've also recently started my own uh, podcast with uh, myself, Seth Bauer, and Tommy Puglia, who are all, all Microsoft MVPs as well. And we just talk about Power BI. It's the idea is we're gonna be having this water cooler kind of conversation, uh, candid conversations around design and people and what happens in the technology and what are changes that are coming and how could you potentially build better reports or manage Power BI in your organization uh, as an individual as well? Also, if you want to get a hold of me on the social media platforms, you can get a hold of me on Twitter. Uh, I have a very big following on LinkedIn as well, and you can also find Power BI tips on LinkedIn. Additionally, if you if you like the content we have, we uh, promote the podcast on all those social media platforms, and we do a podcast every Tuesday and Thursday at 7:30 a.m. Central Standard Time which I think is kind of in the middle of your guys' day, uh, but you can go get the, the audio off of uh, Spotify or Apple Podcasts if you wanna listen to that when you have time, or you just wanna go to bed and you need some boring uh, content to listen to while you go to sleep. Awesome, you can find me on, on YouTube as well. We have a YouTube channel where we put a lot of our content as well. So Power BI Tips does a ton of things. We do a lot of things back for the community. 
Uh, a couple of the key things that we point out here, what we're talking about today will not is, is kind of related here, but um, I have a tool called charts.powerbitips, which is essentially a derivation of Charticulator in the web browser. You can go play with it there if you want. But these are all the other free tools that we produce as Power BI Tips. You can go download external tools with business ops. We have tons of colors at the gallery.powerbitips where you can just browse um, basically thousands of different color palettes if you want to go get some inspiration, which it actually has a very cool feature that when you click on a color, it'll actually render a Power BI report for you automatically. We also help you build theme files for your reports. So if you want to build themed or theme files for your reports, you can also use us there as well. These are all free. Go hit the web links and you can go test out these different tools so that they can help you invest and make better reports in faster time. All right, oops, let's keep going here. Next one, um, we also have some fun swag. So if you like Power BI gear, we sell some funny t-shirts and things that are silly about on Power BI. We just love Power BI. Uh, we're, we're just goofballs and like having fun. So if you wanna go find some of our swag, you're more than welcome to uh, support the brand or rock Power BI as well. All right, now to Charticulator. So there is this spectrum of what is a custom visual where I'm using full code and what is a standard visual that comes from Power BI? The standard visuals are bar charts, column charts, your pie charts, and tables, and those are all built in. You basically have a data model. You drag the fields over to the visual and something displays. So it's, it's kind of built for you. You can stylize it and adjust the properties, but those are all visuals that are kind of drag and drop experiences. As we look across this spectrum of developers, right? So now we're talking maybe less about the business user and we're starting to get closer to that high-end developer. On the far right-hand side of this graph, we have the full custom visual. You can, you can write a visual using nothing but code and you can do it in d3.js, which is an open source graphing library that you can use in JavaScript uh, that uh, will let you build your own custom visuals. So Microsoft gives you the toolkit to do that, but the audience of that is very narrow. Not every person who's building a Power BI report is gonna, is gonna wanna go build an entirely code-based custom visual. So enter what Charticulator is. So Charticulator is a custom visual, but you don't technically have to write a bunch of code to make it work. And so as you look at the spectrum, of different visuals on the landscape here. There's a couple key ones I'm gonna call out. Charticulator is kind of on the business user side. Yes, it takes a little bit of knowledge to understand what is it doing and how you would build various visuals, but the Charticulator visual is kind of a bit more drag and drop. You can kind of grab those visual elements, those columns of data and add them to report page. Another custom visual I like to call out here is another one called Deneb. So Deneb is another custom visual. It uses the Vega and Vega Lite libraries, but in the Deneb visual, you're not writing straight code for every single data point on the chart. You're actually using JavaScript to define a graphical language. So it's a bit more flexible than Charticulator, but it comes with more code writing. And then, you know, if we go really far on the spectrum here, we have R and Python, where you can build also visuals in R and Python directly in Power BI Desktop as well. So there's libraries that you can use like ggplot or plotly inside the R and Python libraries to give yourself more ability to build custom things in Power BI. So what we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna focus solely in on the Charticulator aspect. Okay, so a couple of things I wanna start just to discuss here, just in general, right? When we build visuals with Power BI Desktop, there's this concept of we just drag fields to a visual and the visual automatically displays information for us. We really don't have to think about the positioning of the bars or how big they are or how tall. We can kind of just drag the fields and the visual knows what to graph for us automatically. It makes that experience a little simpler. But if you think about a visual and deconstruct it a little bit, right? There's a whole bunch of standard shapes that you can put on a page. So if I deconstruct this chart a little bit more, every property of that bar chart could have a single bar that has a whole bunch of other properties, things that may or may not be exposed in the standard visuals for Power BI. For example, if you look at the bar chart, each bar could be represented by a square. That square could have a outside border, a perimeter around the shape of that. The color of the background 
could be a transparency. So you could have a color that has transparency to it or not. And as we think about all these properties, the fill color, a transparency, does the bar even show or hide itself, the, its visibility, uh, the border thickness, the border color, all of these physical properties on how to draw the bar could technically be linked to data elements. So you could have, you know, we do bar charts today where you have a number of bars on a chart and then you change the color based on what category you're talking about. So with Charticulator, we actually have more access to more features about shapes and visuals. So we have more flexibility to change the border, the colors, the position, the width, the height, and you can do all kinds of other interesting data charts that when you have more visual properties of that bar, you can adjust more things. And so that's really the core of what we're going to be talking about. Um, we're going to we're going to look at how does Charticulator build a physical visual, and then from that we can then add more data driven properties to that shaped visual or bar. Okay, that's all I have on slides. I promise. Uh, we're going to go in and just build stuff. So I'm a huge proponent of not a lot of slides. I like being in desktop and working on the tool. So assuming that all the demo gods will go well with me here today. I'll try and do as much zooming in as I can to zoom into what we need to see on the page here. Um, but we're going to start from scratch. This is going to assume that you've never worked with Power BI before. You're just starting out for the first time and you're looking at the first time of Charticulator. So first and foremost, how do we get that custom visual inside Power BI Desktop? So let me just check to make sure Zoom it is running here. Okay. So on the right hand side, you'll see that I've already pinned the Charticulator visual in my library for visuals. But if you don't have that icon, which is this red and blue icon here, you can click the ellipsis and say, get more visuals. And what this will do is it will go to Microsoft's app source and it'll give you all the visuals that you can go get from app source. So the first thing I'll do is type in Charticulator, Charticulator, there it is. And then that's the visual we're going after. You'll also notice that it is made by Microsoft and it has this little blue checkbox. The blue checkbox indicates that this is a certified visual. And what that means is it means this visual has been reviewed by the Microsoft team and it is guaranteed to not send data out of the application anywhere else. It stays local to the, in, the inner workings of Power BI. I think this is important to note because there are visuals that potentially send data out like there's like um, linguistics or um, translation services or uh, AI natural language services that potentially work inside a custom visual, but they actually send data out externally. And so those can't be certified. So I just wanna make a clear point that this is a certified visual. Uh, this should be safe to use within your organization if you wanna venture down this path. And another thing I'll, I'll say here too, Microsoft has been doing a much better job supporting this visual in Power BI and they're continually making updates and fixing things and making new features in the tool to make it easier for you to use. So when you start using this, you'll probably see it will change over time uh, and it's been getting better and better. So I'm very pleased Microsoft is investing the time in there. When you click on it, it will give you some details around it. And then you can click the button here called add, and this will add it directly into your uh, Power BI desktop file. So I'm gonna cancel out of this because I've already have it added. And then once you have the Charticulator visual, it's as easy as clicking the visual like you normally would with every other visual on Power BI Desktop. But you'll notice right away, it gives you this interesting screen. And this is very different than what you're used to seeing when you use normal visuals. It's actually giving you some instructions here. So I'm going to make this window wider here. They have some getting started help. They have step one, step two, and step three for getting started with the visual. So we're going to walk through that now. The first thing you'll do is you'll click on the ellipsis. And when you click on the ellipsis, you'll see the very first item in the list is called edit. So Charticulator has an entirely different user interface that's buried inside the visual itself. So when you edit it, it will bring you into a maximum sized visual, and now it will ask you for data around this. This is, this is the editing screen. So the first thing that we could do is we could add data to it. So I could go here to this bar chart, and I have a very simple bar chart with uh, categorical information and sales numbers or sales dollars. You can add that directly here. So I'm going to move on to my next example, but that's kind of how you just get Power, uh, Charticulator installed and on your 
your desktop application. Okay, I'm gonna move over to the next page where we're gonna talk about just building a basic bar chart and just doing a high level overview of what all the features and what are the buttons inside Charticulator and what they do for new users. All right, so the very first thing I like to do whenever I'm building Charticulator visuals, I either like to start with an existing visual or go try to build a table of just the information or the data around Charticulator. You'll see over here on the right hand side, I have country and then I have the average of sales. So this is a good way of visualizing the data before I start trying to build the bar chart. I would be looking at information here that would give me you know, the, the right numbers that I'm looking to graph. So what I'll do is I'll build a usually a simple table like this, and maybe I don't want gross sales initially so I can remove gross sales, and then I just have my simple country and average sales. Now, this is important because the data that I see in this visual is how this exact data would be passed and represented to Power BI. What happens here is there's Microsoft has the analysis services engine in Power BI desktop, and it's already doing some form of aggregations to this data. If you imagine my data set, I may have thousands or hundreds of thousands of transactions that make up all the sales records for Canada, France, Mexico, or Germany. But when Power BI visualizes the data in this visual, it's gonna auto aggregate or sum or average information together that's gonna give you like a dimension and some sort of number or evaluated measure out of that. So whether it's implicit or explicit, it's still gonna give you a single number. So this is important to note because when we go into Charticulator, you'll see how this data is represented. So what I like to do is I'll copy this visual. I'll use a control C on my keyboard. I'll click on the report page and click control V. Hopefully control C, control V, there it goes. And now I have another copy of that visual. Now I have another representative visual on the page. This is a bar chart and it's made using a standard Power BI visual. So we're gonna remake this visual, but instead we're gonna use Charticulator to build this instead of the standard Power BI visual. And then we can see what other things we can do to enhance that visual. So I'm gonna move this up further here in the left or right hand corner, and I'm gonna make this Charticulator visual big. So I'm gonna make this one bigger like this. And then I'm gonna change the, the visual type from, a bar from the table into Charticulator. So I'll click on the Charticulator icon on the right hand side and that will bring me into this visual. And you'll see right now it makes the links for me automatically. Now, we're not gonna use links on this visual. Everything we're trying to graph or show will be linked into the data element. So I'm gonna move the average of sales up to the window above it called data. So I'm gonna move that up so that way all the data that I need is in the field selection method or the, the field window of called data. So. I'm gonna grab average of sales. I'm just gonna move it right up here to the bottom of this list. And now I have all my data in the visual. Click on the ellipsis and then we click edit right here on that again to get back into the visual. Okay, now we have data in the visual, but now the only thing that's changed really is we have this yellow button on the left-hand side that says create chart. So what this will do when I click on create chart, it's gonna bring up the entire visual editor. And you can flip this. So I have on the left-hand side here, I have fields, glyph, and layers on the left-hand side. You can actually switch which side this belongs on. I like keeping it on the left side because it makes me feel like this is different than Power BI because all the data fields are on the right-hand side and all my visual editing things are on the left-hand side. Now, this visual takes up a lot of space. I'm gonna be building a visual from scratch in this window. So I don't really need the visualizations pane, the filters pane, and I can even shrink the top bar a little bit as well. So what I like to do when I'm working in Charticulator is I'll click on the names for visuals, fields, make them small so I get more space. And then there's a little tiny carrot on the bottom here where I can minimize the top ribbon and make it a little bit smaller. So I'll click that little minimize ribbon and that makes all the, the top part of the, the visuals go a little bit smaller. It gives me more space to work with because I have a lot of things on the page here. Okay. First things first, we wanna see what data do we have? So if I click on the ellipsis over here, let, let's, before I go into like building things, I'm gonna go through like, let me just do a quick overview of all the things we see here, because there's actually a lot of stuff going on. On the left-hand side, we have this fields panel. The fields are the data fields that Power BI is giving to the Charticulator app, and it's gonna let me see a representation of that data right in the application. So if I click on the ellipsis here, I can actually see 
this is the exact same table. I have five rows of data in two columns. That's exactly what I saw on the table when I was designing in Power BI Desktop. So as you're thinking about these visual things or things that you're going to be build for, building for a visual, if you need additional data properties about a certain field or data field, you may need to create some additional measures in Power BI Desktop and then add them to this visual to add those additional columns. So you may need to add more data to this table and widen it out so you have enough uh, variation to, to adjust and change things based on that data points. Okay, next is this thing called scales. And you can think of a scale as, you know, if I think about the bar height, right? The bar would be zero or up to some dimension, right? In this case, we have numbers in the tune of 17,000, 14,000, so in the 10,000 range, right? You can think of a scale as how do I build that bar because the bar has to be extrapolated from data and make it represent some sort of height. And that height has to be represented in pixels, essentially. So what the scales are doing is the scales are letting you know that, hey, this data field is being applied to some sort of scale and that scale is giving you a range of information. You know, what's the min, what's the max? And, and that way you can see the variation on these different data points. You'll see things appear in the scales as you build more things in Charticulator. The next area we look at here is this thing called the glyph. Okay, I've heard this term called many different things, a glyph, a mark, or whatever. This is the representation of a single bar. So when we think about the data points, we had earlier, we had five data points for different countries. For each country, this glyph will represent something that describes that single row of data. That's what we're trying to do here. So for every row of data, I'm essentially going to get a representation of a glyph. Now, the glyph here is actually showing, oh, sorry, I got a little note here. There we go. Okay. Um, so the glyph is actually showing like, you know, if we put a bar in here, if we put text, if we put a number in here, all of those visual elements would be represented for each row of data. Another thing we'll, we use uh, fairly frequently is sometimes we'll make multiple glyphs. So we, we, we pair this thing around glyphs. We can have multiple versions of these things or multiple visual representations of data. Next is this thing called the layers. You can think of this as like pieces of paper. Again, this is not a concept that's very well described or articulated in Power BI Desktop. This is a little bit of a different theory or, or mindset. So everything you bring to the report canvas or this visual canvas is thought of as in layers. And so the top layer is the item on the top of the list. And if you want to adjust the layers, you can actually rearrange elements by moving them around in this list. So this is an ordered list of how things are stacking on top of each other. So if you make a circle and a dot and they overlap, and you want to un overlap that, you'd have to like rearrange the layers so it sits on top of another one. If you use visual programs like Adobe or Figma or other visual programs, even like um, Visio, possibly even like you know PowerPoint to some degree, right? You have this concept of like bring things to the front to the top layer. For every single object or every single thing you create on the report page or the the, the visual page here, I guess is what you would call it. For everything on the visual, every single thing has settings, and all those settings are different depending on what you select. That's what's in the attribute. All the attributes are all the describing features or settings or properties of whatever you've selected. Moving across the top here, we have this tool ribbon bar at the top here. And I'm going to just not go through every single one of these. I'm going to pick out the key ones that I use very often. The first one here on the left hand side is called links. Uh, this is where you can link two visual elements together and actually draw a line between them. So this is how you would uh, draw a line chart um, potentially here. The next one is legends. The middle one here is called legends. I don't use legends very often. It's just not something I use very frequently. Um, so that's just a, a visual, a style element that I, I don't regularly use. The next one is guides. Okay. Guides are cool and they definitely help you orient yourself on the page. There's a couple different styles of guides. If I open this menu up, you'll see there are multiple guides in here. A guide in the Y direction. And you can think of this as a dotted line or as something that goes on forever. It, it will always be in that plane of information. And they have an X uh, guide as well. I don't use guides very often in the X and Y. However, 
I use these array guides. So these are guides where I can set a start point and an end point, and then this guide equally divides something into multiple segments. And that could be done in the X direction or the Y direction. So you'll see right here on my uh, report page, immediately I selected the plot segment, and this is where the graphics would go for the, the glyphs. If I zoom in here, you'll notice there's some of these things like dotted lines here and here, and this dotted line over here in the middle. And then you'll notice this little green mark here, there's a little green circle. What this is doing, all the dotted lines on the page, these are your guides. And the guides you have on the page right now with the middle of the page, or the, and the, and the middle of the horizontal middle of the visual, those you can't remove. They're always there and you can't adjust them. So if I go in here and I actually uh, adjust the report chart, I can actually adjust it and I can actually grab the entire report visual and I can adjust the size of the report canvas. Now by me doing that, I can you can see that it's adjusting those lines and those dotted lines are adjusting with whatever the size of the visual is doing. Those do not change. Now you can adjust how close they are to the edge when I click on the uh, plot segment or the report, report page. Down here at the below, bottom part, you have these things called margins. So if I want to adjust the distance, let's see if I can draw this out correctly. If I want to adjust the distance from here to here, if I want to adjust that number, right now that's set to 10 pixels right now, so that's 10 pixels uh, as we for the margin. I can make that smaller by going, uh, I can go to the line, I can either just drag the line smaller like here, or I can go down to the uh, actual chart margins and just adjusting that. So I can say 10. So I can then adjust those different uh, widths or dimensions and I can move those guides further away from the edge of the visual. You may use this on occasion for when you're having like text or text values that appear on your chart. So I'll change all of these to 10 so we can see how that works. 10, 10, 10 and 10, okay? And that just adjusts those elements. Another thing that I'll point out here is we're now talking about the next section called plot segments. There's a 2D region and a, a line plot segment. Okay, what does this mean? 2D is like your bar chart, right? I have an X and a Y axis. I need to take a categorical value, my country, put it on the X axis, and then I wanna put a bar underneath that data point. And then on the Y axis, I would draw the height of that bar. So that's what a 2D region really is. It's basically X and Y plots. The line, however, is not that. It's literally just a, a line and you have data that you can put on that line and it only makes a, it's a basically a one dimensional um, data point. So you can only have one dimension there. If I go into this uh, chart here, I can actually grab this little green corner here and I can move it into the middle of uh, the space here. And if I did this correctly, hopefully it'll let me unsnap this thing. It's actually, it's not going to let me unsnap. So let me delete this all together. If I click the rectangular plot segment for 2D region, I can just draw a square in here. Now, one thing that's, that's a lot of gotcha for very brand new users, there's this little circle on each of the corners. A circle that is white with no color means it's undefined. Meaning if this visual changes in size, it's not going to link that stretching of the plot segment to the to the report, the visual canvas, right? So there's no definition to that corner. So if you see things with circles that are white, you have a problem. You really don't want anything that you build that have those undefined corners if you can help it. So what you can do instead is you can grab that corner and you drag it. And then when you see if I'm dragging it here, everything in this area turns orange. The orange means it's gonna snap that corner into a position that is defined. It has definition now. So if I snap that in here, it, oops, let's go over here to the corner. It now snaps it green, meaning that that corner has now def definition. It knows where to size it properly. In the bottom corner here, I can also do the same thing. I can grab that corner. I can drag it here to the bottom right-hand corner and that's now snapped together. All the corners are now green for this plot segment. Now, when I adjust my report size or the, the visual size here, I'm sorry, it keeps adjusting with everything else, which is kind of cool. You can also do really interesting things here as well. I talked earlier about those guides. I can put a guide here in the X direction. I can make my guide go from here to here, and then I can increase the number of divisions in that guide. 
So these are lines that don't show up in the visual, but they help me orient objects there. So now I can take my visual and then I can snap my visual to any one of these guides. And now I can make the visual a portion of a whole. So now I can start subdividing my visual. And this gets really cool if you want to put two visuals or three visuals all in the same visual together. So if you're using the same data multiple times, you can now graph three or four visuals at the same time. The cool part about this is if you did Power BI Desktop, when Power BI Desktop fires queries back to the data engine to go build things, those queries that it fires back for every visual on the page, you're making one query. In this visual, you could have three visuals or KPI cards or other things that you want. You're only firing one query back. So this is actually a more efficient method if you need two visuals linked together or, or working together to represent the same kind of data. So kind of a cool little technique that I use there. Um, very helpful. All right, um, moving on al along, there's this thing called scaffolds. I don't ever really use them, so I don't really talk a lot about it. We're not going to spend a lot of time on scaffolds. Um, so I'm going to kind of skip over that one and move forward. But they're basically how you make uh, different uh, portions of bars or orientations of things inside the chart. So if you're making a circular chart or a polar chart, something that's usually time bound, time is a very good polar graph kind of thing. You can have cyclical years that repeat over and over again. Um, that's where you would, you would change the, the polar graphing of that to a polar chart. All right, the things that I use fairly frequently, marks, which are rectangles and ellipses and lines. That's what a mark is. Then you have these things called shapes, which are just triangles, squares, circles. Then we have lines here. You can create a line that goes between different visual elements. You have text. So this is a text box or a text word that you can apply to the, the different visuals. If you want to import your own images, you have the ability of importing a an image into this tool, which will allow you to like have custom graphics or custom icons showing up within the in the Charticulator uh, platform. One of the ones that I use very frequently is this thing called uh, Measure. I think it's what it's called. Oh, Data Access. I'm sorry. This is Data Access. Yeah, I use it so often I forgot the name. So this is the Data Access. Now this is a cool um, ability here. This allows you to create things like a box and whiskers chart or other things where you need multiple calculations inside the visual to do different mathematical operations on stuff, which is kind of really cool. This last one here is where you would do like a, a chart within a chart. So I think it's called, um, here, let's cover the name, nested charts. I don't really use this one very often. It's a little bit trickier to use. Um, it had some bugs initially when Charticular came out. It's actually getting better over time, but this is one that I just typically don't use very often. Okay. All of this to explain the UI of what's going on here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to build our bar chart. So I'm going to get rid of my guide coordinator. I'm going to erase that. I'm going to go back to my plot segment. I'm going to move this plot segment over. I'm going to grab this guy. It's not letting me move it, so I'm going to erase that. I'll get a new plot segment here. Just draw my new plot segment on here. Great. All right. Let's start making data. So we have country, and we're going to put country on the y-axis. So I'm going to put the country. I'm just going to click and drag it over to the y-axis. What this will immediately do is it'll make a list of states, or countries, sorry, where it orders that data for me. So that's an ordered set of data. Now what I can do is I can pop this glyph out, because you can actually move these windows around a little bit. I'm going to build a glyph. So for each state, what is the representation of data? So here's my little area chart here. This is how the glyph is going to be built. So now what I can do is I can go back up here to my marks, grab a rectangle and I can grab my rectangle and just draw the rectangle inside this glyph. Now I haven't bound any data elements to the width of this bar. So when I look at the report, I get all these bars with the exact same length, which makes sense because I haven't taken any data and said, okay, what is the length of the bar? What is the property of the length of the bar? What does that mean? How does that match the rest of the data set here? So now what I can do is I can grab the average of sales and I can add that to the width of the bar. And what you'll notice now is each of the glyphs are now scaling appropriately. So this is where the scales come into play here. You see that I have the shape dot width. So the full scale of the bar goes all the way to the end of the chart because that's the number with the largest value. And then all other bars are scaled off of that maximum size. So they all shrink a little bit because they're not as large as that main bar. 
So that's that's how we build the chart there. Now, okay, great. You you repeated what you built in Power BI. Whoop de doo. Well, let's do things we can't do in Power BI with this bar chart. Let's enhance it a bit further. So inside this glyph, let's add um, some more information about what's going on in the data bars. We can actually grab the item here for text, and I can go here in the very middle, and I'm zooming in here, right here to the very base of the bar, and I'm going to put a text box right there. So I'm going to put a little text box right here, and then you'll see that there's a little text box. There's a little green anchor where the text box lives, and then the text is right below it. Well, I can move that text box around or rotate it or do any kind of fun things I want there. So I'm going to grab that text box. I'm going to move it here towards the end of the bar. And you'll see that it's black on blue, which is not my favorite combination of colors. Um, we probably want to make it a little bit better looking. So now what we can do next is grab the text and we go down here to the style options for the text and let's change that to white. So we now have nice text that pops out. Now the text is just saying text on every single one of these. So if I minimize this really quick here, you can see it just says text, 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 text because we don't have any data that has been bound to what that field property is. So if I open this back up, now what we'll do is we'll add the country. Oops, I lost my bar here. Let's go back over here to the end. There you go. I'll add my country back to the text value. So now I can bind that data field to the actual value of what it's listed. So now we've, we've, we've saved some space to some degree. We've been able to take the words and move them onto the bar itself. You can't do that in Power BI. Next we're gonna do is, well, we now, don't really need this extra line of text here on the end, we can kind of get rid of that. So what we can do now is we can go back to our plot segment. We can go down to our X axis and we can not make that visible, or sorry, Y axis, I apologize. Y axis we wanna go to, and we wanna say, we don't wanna see the Y axis anymore. So we'll go to the Y axis, wherever that is here, Y axis categorical, and we'll make it not visible and then turn that off because we already have the data points here. Now, other data points, let's go a little bit further with this. Maybe we want the total value of that bar. So now what I can also do is grab text again, and on the other end of the bar chart, I can grab a text field. And until recently, I think an update was made from Power BI Desktop, you couldn't even put the data, the data label at the end of the bar. And you can do some interesting things where uh, you can do some math in here if you wanted to have it on the inside or the outside. Like you can do some interesting, cool things around this data bar that will make that text dynamically sit at the end of that bar. Next, I'll take the average of sales. I'll add it to the text box here. And now I have my average of sales, but it doesn't look so good. <laughs> we don't have any formatting. So we have the ability to fix that. So I'm gonna move this back in. I'm gonna minimize the glyph here. I'll go down to the uh, the attributes for this next text box. And first thing we'll do is we'll change the color to white because I, I don't want it to be ugly black. And next what we'll do is we're gonna uh, change the formatting here. So in this formula bar, and this is probably the least amount of code you can do in Charticulator, what this is doing is it's defining a specification of what is the value that it's doing. So it's taking an average of average of sales, which in our case, we have one row per country, so it's just the same value that we have. Um, and then we have this other portion at the end here where we can actually look at how the data is being formatted. So it's uh, 0.1 float is what that tells me. So I can go in there and I can add a comma in front of it, which will then change it to commas. And then I can put zero there. So I don't want any float values. So now I can add a comma in front of each one of those. And if I wanna go even further with that, I can actually add a dollar sign in front of this that will let me see a dollar sign. Inside the formatting here so I get it in the right spot. There we go. So now I'm able to add the dollar sign in front of each of those things with a comma and then have it have a zero float decimal. So it's the, the, the decimal's gone. Um, you can do other things in here too where you could have like in thousands or millions. You can also do other uh, abbreviations on top of this as well that can help you uh, continually enhance the formatting of it. Okay. The last thing I want to do here uh, around this bar chart is, okay, this looks good. Let's make it a bit more colorful because it's going to match our other chart that we have in Power BI. So I like to use these things, like they call them like a rainbow chart, like each bar gets a single color. But I like using these bar charts because they can interact with the rest of the visuals on the page. So if I click on a bar of a color, I may have other visual elements on the page that are also colored the same way. So next I'll go into the shape autumn. And then I'll grab down here on the fill property. You'll see here the style is fill. I'll grab the country column and I'll add that and drag that to the fill area. 
And when I do that, it now changes the colors of all the bars to match the styling of Power BI Desktop. So looks good to me now. Uh, last, last thing I'll do is I'll hit the save icon up here in the upper left hand corner. And by hitting save and going back to the report, it now builds. Yeah, no problem. Now I have uh, my chart. Someone has asked uh, what happens if the label is longer than the bar? Will it be truncated? Yes, no, so you have to be careful about this one. So the, if the label's longer than the bar, and what I can do here to some degree, I think I can shrink this down a little bit. As it shrinks, it will just make messiness. <laughs> so it'll make a mess. So it's not smart enough to know how long that text is and how big the text needs to be, but you can control the text size by data points. You could actually make that a, a variable that you could adjust as well. So um, when you are clicking on multiple data elements, this also clicks just like you would on desktop. The only downside I see here is you'll notice that how Power BI Desktop picks, picks its color ranges of Mexico is blue. Well, Charticulator tries to pick the same colors, but there is no way to align all the colors exactly as is. Uh, because these the colors that are in desktop are usually picked out of order comparing to what uh, Charticulator does. But if the text overruns the end of the bar, the text will just keep on writing itself. So you have to build some smarts into that text potentially on if you, if the bar is going to be very small or build your chart in a way that allows the text to run off the edge. In this case, I'm using white text on a dark bar. Probably not the best idea because if these bars run out to the end and I have more text than bar, you're going to lose the text. It's going to be white on white and you can't see it. So the design of the chart's not the best, but you might want to adjust the, the design of the chart so it works a little better. Great question. Any other questions? No, not so far. Thanks. Okay. And I also want to check, what is our time? How are we doing for time checks? I have a lot more examples on this too. Uh, technically, we would have uh, 20 minutes more, but you can okay. go on uh, a little bit more if you okay, want. That's good. not a problem. So I'm going to do a couple more examples here, and then I'll just kind of pause and look for questions here at the end. So I just want to make sure I don't overrun your time. So I have probably way more content than I need here. So the next one we're going to talk about is well, let's do something a little bit more elaborate. This is a bar chart, pretty basic. Uh, you can see how you get those visual items in there. The glyph kind of makes a little bit of sense. Let's do something a bit more complicated. Let's build a glyph with a lot of visual elements on it and a lot more data points. So I'm going to go over this next one called the box plot. So this is a, a box and whisker, or you want to call it box plot. There's a number of um, different kinds of data sets here for this. You could, you could call this plotting. Now, the neat part about this one is inside Charticulator, you have the ability of creating your own in visual calculations, right? So let's go to the example here. On the left hand side here, I have all these different repeated values for bugs, right? So this is Pokemon data. This is their hit points per animal that we have here on the left hand side. And you see that there's many, many different types of animals and their names may be different on this chart. And we may have different types of those animals. So uh, we have the bug type, and these are the different data points that come along with their hit points. So what we want to do is maybe visualize the distribution of that data, how how dense is the information, and which animals have the highest uh, number of hit points. Okay, so first thing I'll do, I have the data in a table. I'll control C, control V. I'll copy the data table first, right onto my page, so I have the data table here. There's my data table. I'll make it nice and big because I'm going to turn this into a Charticulator visual. Go over to visualizations, click on the button for Charticulator. It will now transfer my visual into a Charticulator one. I'll need to move my hit points up to data. So I'll have the type and the hit points up here. And then I can go in and hit edit on this visual. We're going to now cre click the create chart button. And now we're in the editor. I'm going to minimize visualizations here. And just to make sure that my data is correct, I'm going to click the ellipsis. And yes, I can see that bug of the type has been represented multiple times. Cool. All right, let's start building uh, some stuff on the chart. So first things first, let's put the type of bugs on the y-axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click my plot segment, and I'm going to grab the type and drag it to the y-axis. And you'll notice that even though I have many, many records for bugs, it's trying to auto-aggregate all of the different categories into, the, into one group. So now I know that these are all the bug animals in that particular category. With this now, I have a whole bunch of visual items here. So this is my visual. Uh, this is the, the bar chart here. And if I click in the chart here, you'll notice, hopefully, 
there is these different uh, properties of the chart. I can stack things in the X direction, meaning up and down, or I can stack them in the Y direction, long wise. So if I change this from stack X to stack Y, we're going to now build things in a long version of this. So it's going to stack the data in the Y direction. And this is where this is where basically what we did is we changed the scaffolding here. The scaffolding doesn't start at the X and build up. We're now going to build at the Y the axis and build out. OK, so I'm going to make this uh, glyph thing much larger here because we're going to it's it's now much smaller for us to work with. Let's see if I can make this bigger now. There we go. Make that larger. And if I zoom in here, wow, this is really narrow. Let me let me adjust this a bit here. That's a bit too narrow for us to work with here. So what I can do here, if I want to minimize this glyph, I can take this chart because I have so many different data elements. If I take the chart and make it narrower like this, it will actually change how the glyph looks. And hopefully, still really not enough. Let me go do one more thing here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want to make this larger so it's easier to see. I'm going to go over here to this one. I'm just, don't, you don't have to do this typically, but I'm going to filter this thing here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to apply a filter to this data table here. Filter by categories. All right, good. So clear this. I'm just going to pick two categories and see what that does. Does that make my bar chart bigger? No, it doesn't. Okay. I'm going to, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take this off of that X axis. So I'm going to go back to my plot segment here real quick. I'm going to remove this type here and hopefully that makes my glyph a little larger. Yeah, it's a little bit big. Okay, this will be will work for now. Okay, we'll, we'll add that back in later. But for now, I'm going to build this thing. So the next thing we're going to use here is a new feature called this um, data axis. The data axis is really important. This allows me to take multiple data points, basically make calculated values that are all relative to each other. So the data axis, when I click the button, I have to start somewhere. So I start here. This is where the zero value would be, the lowest value. And then I drag it to the other end where the highest value would be. And so it makes basically a measuring stick that I can apply data to. Pretty cool. Now, if I take the hit points and add that to the data axis, what it will do is it'll create an aggregation for me. And there's a data expression here at the very bottom where it says, oops, generally get rid of some of these things here so you can see at the very bottom here. It's saying the data expression is the average of the hit points. So now I can create other data points. So if I add it again for a second time, you're going to see it's going to say average twice. So what I need to do to build a box and whisker chart is I need a minimum value of all the data points inside the bug grouping. So if I say minimum and then change this to, um, let's add another one here. Let's add another hit points here. Do another one here, a third one. And we'll go to the maximum. And what this should do is it should start adding. It's very hard to see because they're all actually all on top of each other here. Um, I need to get it to add something else here. Hold on, put this type back here. Let's go back to the glyph. Why is it doing that? It should be redrawing that. Let's go back here to the hit points here, add another one. Don't know what it's having an issue. So let me re let me try that again. Let me erase that data access. Go back to adding another uh, data access there again. So I'll add my data access back. Start at the left hand side, going all the way to the right. I'll add my here, assign that there. Okay, that looks good. I add it there again. Okay, I have my average hit points, good. Another one, good. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, now my expression should be minimum. Do it, make it, <laughs> make it happen. Why is it not aggregating it? Oh, 
It's being all kinds of weird right now. This is a bug. Interesting. Funny that I'm working on bug things right now and it's having issues. <laughs> awesome. All right, I want average and I want minimum. Well, this used to work. Doesn't seem to work right now. Let me check my other visual here. So I've had, I have the uh, cake that I baked earlier. So I have another visual here that has the visual working. So let me see what's going on here. Let me edit this real quick here. And we'll double check what's going on. In quartile average max. Yeah, it looks the same stuff. Data access. And look at that. It's the same stuff. All right, let me try it one more time. I'm going to go back to the visual here. Maybe for some reason I screwed something up. So let me go back to my box plot. Let me just delete this real quick. Maybe I did something wrong by getting it started here. So let's grab my chart. That, drop it in here. I'm going to add one more data field just to make sure it's doing what it should be doing. Uh, for each animal, I have an ID. So what I'm going to also pass into this is an ID value. So the idea is for each value, whether it's a type one or, or the different types of bugs, each numerical value has a, a unique record. So I'm going to add this number in here just to make sure that I have uniqueness per row of data. So let's try that. Does Maybe I missed it. That it is summing the ID, the chart. It shouldn't matter the sum of the ID, I think. I think it's the fact that it can't, it's doing the average of the same data point over and over again, which is what I didn't want it to do. So let's, let's try this again. Oops, I don't want it in links. I need to go this up here, and that needs to be up here. Okay, good. So I've got all my data, and it's repeating rows. Okay, good. That looks great. Grab my type, drop it on the y axis, grab my data axis. We'll drop it on my glyph here. Pop this out. We'll do it here. Drag it up here like this. We'll grab our hit points, drop it in there. Okay, average, let's do it again. Average, and now I don't want it to do average. I want it to do a max. Must be grouping by something here. Hold on. Data general average, data access, plot segment. I don't want any grouping. Data's first. Something has changed here and I'm, I've missed it. Hmm. I don't know why it's not letting me add those items. I literally have it designed the same way. Categorical, numerical, categorical. All right, I'm gonna give it one more good college try here. And if not, we'll move on and I'll just show you the final solution on what it should do. Because for whatever reason, the version I'm using, I've got a bug in there somewhere. All right, I'm going to go try a glyph from scratch. We're going to design our little bar chart. We'll take our data access, we'll erase that. Go stack it in the Y direction. We'll make our glyph go from the data axis from the start to the finish. Add our hit points to the data axis. Okay, that looks right. I want another one. Another one. Hmm. Okay, well, I have clearly done something wrong in here and it will not draw my different data. But what it should do is it should separate these different values. And maybe I, if I, I'll just throw something on here. Maybe another mark on here would help. 
So I'll just grab another mark, drop a little bar in there, and it will not pull those points apart. Okay. Bummer. And I want that visible on first. Position, default tick values. Okay. All right. Well, I must be doing something wrong here because it's clearly not drawing the way I used to do it. So I'll delete this one and we'll go back to my other one. So I'll show you how the final solution should have worked. Don't really know why it's not letting me do that, but the same thing is happening here. So I have the um, the same data types. I have the number pound sign, the type, and the hit points. And if I edit this one, you could see what should happen is when I pop this out and we actually look at these different visuals, on this one, we actually have the multiple data points. See how there's minimum, quartile, average, and quantile here. All of these different data points on the data axis should allow you to grab and draw multiple elements on that data axis. So you should be able to have multiple data expressions here that has the minimum, the maximum, the average, and the quartile. So all of these data points basically draws these, these data elements on this line chart. And if I turn it on so it's visible, I guess it'll be okay. Um, it should show you this. So we have essentially this line. And now what I can do as well, like I'll get rid of all these other visual elements on here and we'll build the line parts uh, additionally. So let me get rid of all of these symbols and things. All right, good. All right. So assuming my other step worked correctly, we would have this. We have a data access with multiple minimum quartiles. Uh, this is the quartile one. So this is doing like the first uh, standard distribution away from the average. You have the average or the mean, the quartile three, which is um, two standard deviations on the other side, and then the max values as well. So once we have these data points on this, you'll see that there's also a guide added here. So on the far left-hand side, I made a guide because I want to divide this thing into in various segments. And you can increase the number of those guides to a higher amount. So we can say instead of just having three items, we could go up to four. And what this will allow me to do is now that I have the data points all lined out on a line chart, or on the line basically, I can now draw things. So let's build the whisker and the box puller. So the first thing I'll do is I'll grab a line and I'm going to start here at the minimum value and I'll draw my line across here like this. So that's the minimum of the whisker. And then I'll draw the other end of the whisker at the other end of the box plot. I'll go to the, the maximum value and I'll draw that across here. So that's the, the ends of the range. So that's the minimum value and the maximum value. Then in the middle here, I can grab another line and draw it all the way down the middle. And that gives me my the range or the data range from the min to the max. Next, we wanna draw the bar section. So this is between the two different quartiles. So now what I'll do is I'll draw a rectangle and I'll start here at this quartile and I'll draw this really big box around the quartile section. So that's the middle point of data. So that's where the concentration of data is. Then next we may want to display where's the average in all of this. So now we can represent that with a dot in the middle. So now I can go grab a dot and I can put the dot right in the middle of the chart and align it to the average. I know this is a little hard to see here, but if I zoom in here, you can see I'm using the average data point and the middle of the chart to align that center data point. So now I put this here and it's not very clear because that data circle is a different color. So for now, I'm just going to make it black. And now we have the middle of that as well. So now we, now we can basically adjust the styling, right? So now everything looks good. Uh, we may want to continue to finesse this. The colors are very harsh right now, so we can uh, make this a little bit cleaner. So for line one, we can then change these colors to more of like a light gray. So it's a little bit uh, softer on the eyes. Line two, same thing, change the color to a light gray. The middle bar, uh, the one that goes between it, we can make that uh, not a solid line. We can make that a dot or dashed line. And then we can increase the width of that um, and then potentially also change the color of that as well. So this will also give us some, some definition to like, what is the dotted range of that? The center point or the centroid of where the average lives, we can change that color to be something else. Let's make it like a nice bold red. And the perimeter or the box of it, we can also adjust that as well. So we can make that a little bit, uh, we can change the transparency there so you can actually see the dotted line going through it. So that's now the, the basically the creation of your box plot. Uh, you can then 
minimize this now because now we have all the data elements drawn on the page. And so now we have all these different uh, elements on the page. And the final thing we may want to do is we may want to add the name of each animal on here. So let me grab a text box and we'll put that here at the very end and add a little text wing right there. And we'll grab the type of that animal and put it on the end. So now you can see that we have the box plot working out. And actually, I don't like that, dash, that dotted line. It's a little bit too faint, if you ask me. So I'll make it a dashed line. Yeah, something like that. That looks a little better. There you go. So now we have a box and whisker plot. Uh, and we're able to take that those different data types and add them to the axis so it actually draws those different data points for us. And these are all intra-visual calculations. So the only thing that's being sent to this visual is one large table and the min and the max are being calculated for each individual category. So if I hit save now and go back to the report, now we have our box and whisker plots for all the different animals. Sorry about that confusion there on that little uh, step. It should work. You should be able to drag like I did. Uh, you should be able to drag something over there, but for whatever reason, my version of Charticulator or something I was doing there was incorrect. But this is how it should ultimately look when you're done with the box and whisk whisker plot. Okay, I'm gonna just show you, I know we're running out of time, we're getting close in time here. So I wanna just show you a couple other things you can do here. Uh, and then I'll point out some other areas where you can learn more about Charticulator and you can go get templates that you can go use in your own uh, visuals. So um, here's another one where we have links between different data points. So it, this is what the final chart can look like. And I'll just tell you how this is represented. So this is another chart that we built. Uh, this is actually on my YouTube channel as well, so you can see how I built this chart. So the left-hand side is we're doing a couple different things. We have a scatter plot down below, and I have two bar charts on either side, okay? So the data point for each individual dot, this dot links to a line that matches the height of that bar. So what this is doing is it's a drawing a line between each of these bars and putting whiskers to the data points. So if I go in here and edit this, I'm going to turn off a couple of things so you can see kind of how it was built. So first thing I can uh, hide these links, right? And then I can hide the different plot segments. So I started off with building a single uh, scatter plot, which is uh, designed by having the the gender of the, the is the color on the dots, and then I have a variable one and variable two, and those are just representing the x and y axes of the chart. So that's how we built that part. Then I can turn on these other areas. So then I built a bar chart. So I actually made a brand new plot, uh, a plotted gr a glyph over here that has a, you know, a bar chart on it. And then I was able to order this and filter it by the gen different genders. So I filter this to be only the female gender in here. And then what I was able to do is I'm able to add to that a link. And then the linking item is here. It's this option up here where you can grab two different plot segments by holding the control key or shift key. And now you can graph, okay, from plot segment number one to plot segment number two, how do you make all those wispy lines attach? One thing I'll note here is if you want to draw two different charts like I did here in this in this visual, you actually need two different glyphs. So the glyph on the uh, scatter chart on the bottom here is a single data point. It's just a dot on a on a page, that's it. The glyph, when you make another plot segment, you need to create the glyph first and then create the plot segment to put on top of it. So you're actually doing two glyphs, one for each plot segment. And the order of which you develop that is, you have to first start the glyph, then create the plot segment, and then start the second glyph, and then add the plot segment. So that way you can get two different uh, visual graphical types there. So if I turn these all back on, now you can see we have this chart of these bars or ordered of ordered bars that are now filtering down to the visual. And if I go back to the report here, let's not save, I'll just use the old one here. Uh, the cool thing about this is you can actually adjust this, and if you wanted to select different things, uh, if I go to this data table here, everything is interactive. All the stuff that works with Charticulator works with the, the visual here. So if I bring a slicer on the page here, and then I go into the um, gender data that we have here for sample data, and I go here and I say, let's grab all the variable ones, and I can now adjust this, and will now update the chart and it will start filtering down information. And so I can dynamically adjust the chart and see what values we're looking at. So as you can see that I'm changing the, the, the range of those data points. And as I go really far down here, you can see that each one of these data points actually do in fact match that single data point. So I can actually see that it's uh, 
attaching to that one data point all the way over here. So just kind of another really fun way of doing this thing. Uh, people are very creative with their visuals and what they want to build. Uh, you could even filter this whole thing by male or female if you wanted. So I could do another slicer for gender and then just pick all the female data points and it would just show me that for all the male data points and show me that too. So it's kind of a really interesting way of graphing different things where you can add a lot more flavor and texture to this. This is actually a YouTube video on my, my YouTube channel for Charticulator. I'll go find the link here and try and drop that in here in a minute. Okay, so this is another kind of cool visual. Uh, the last one I want to just show you very quickly here is uh, this is another visual, uh, a Charticular te template. So I have a GitHub repo that I put out all of the templates that I've been building on or working on. You can go to github.com powerbi.tips slash Charticulator templates. And if you go there, you can find a visual named chord chart. So I've already added some data fields to this visual. I have data in the data range and I have this thing called links. So a linked range is where I have uh, a data. Basically, it's a relationship between data points. So Power BI, when it builds a data set for you, it can only build one big table of data. It really can't build two tables of data and then link them together. That's really what's required for a chord chart. So what we do here with this one is we actually grab all the different data fields and the links items are where I'm creating data, you know, the source and target. So it's actually giving me data that tells me how to make the relationship between different portions of the chords. Again, there's a YouTube video on this one as well. So if I go in here and click edit, I can import a template and I already have the chord chart template from the uh, Git repo on my desktop. And when I open it, it'll then allow me to map the data between what I have and what's in the visual. So because this is the visual I built previously, it's everything's mapped up nice and easy. You can find the ID is mapped to the ID. And when I save the mapping, it auto builds me the entire chart. So I don't have to build any of this. This is saved already and I can just use this information. So this is the chart and then I can hit uh, back to report and it will let me save it. And now this is my chord chart. And then as I click on different elements here, I can see the, uh, the, the travel or the, this is basically a, cart, a chart that is showing trade movements between different countries. So we can see which companies that are getting materials from China, uh, where our country is sending data or sending information or, or uh, basically a cargo shipping to China or from the United States. And so you can kind of click on these different things and see this really interesting chart. But in order to make these little rings, right, the rings portion here, these guys, these all come from that links information. And it's kind of tricky. And it's the, the trick of this one is when you're doing this, you need to use the very specific wording of source ID and target ID. So in order to make the relationships between the items in the cord, you need that very specific detail there because Charticulator is looking for source ID and target ID, and then the amount is how big the bar is. So if you look over here, the thickness of some of these bars, you know, some of these guys are wispy thin, uh, the thickness comes from the amount. Okay, that's basically it. So those are the kind of like the fast whirlwind tour of Charticulator. Uh, kind of all stuck together there. So I hope it gives you a good overview. I really want to give you the flavor of like, it's a really cool tool uh, and it does a whole lot more things than what you can do in normal desktop uh, as well. So that's kind of the run, the run around there. Thanks. I have to admit, uh, I, I knew it was complicated, but I didn't, I didn't know it was that complicated. <laughs> I think I would uh, find it easier to uh, write Python to draw a custom visual instead of using Chat Creator, <laughs> but I'll give it a try. So uh, here's what I would say. If, if I have a good series on YouTube. It's all it's a playlist on my YouTube channel. It's called Charticulator and I go through I go a little bit slower. Uh, it's actually like, you know, six like hours or so. If you want to watch, watch through some of those and then you can pause the video and do it a bit on your own. It's a little bit weirder in your head on how you then stitch these data points together, right? It's you're taking data and you're binding it to visual elements. So you actually have to shift your thinking about how you build things. And once you understand how it works, it's much easier for you to quickly grab data points and bring data points to a visual to make it work for you. Uh, we have a few questions be before we yeah, close sure. the session. So someone was asking, I'm not sure if you already explained what the links are in Charticulator settings. Can you say it again? Yeah, so let me, I'm gonna do just, a, I'm gonna go back to the links area. It was, a, I went pretty fast on this one, so I'll just 
I'll do the linking thing here so you can just see how it actually works. OK, so let me just copy this. Oh, I will share my screen because I just turned it off. Sorry. Thank you. There we go. OK, here we go. All right, so uh, I'm going to copy this visual. So this is the data I'm going to work with. So I, I have the uh, a column with categorical values and I have all these data points. OK, so let's just make a line chart right with dots on it. Right. So if we did that, that'll that'll show us how to link things together. OK, so I'm going to go in here. I'm going to create a visual. Oops, I don't want to do that. I'm going to grab my table first. So grab, grab my table, copy it, paste it. All right, now that I've got my table, I'm going to make it a little bit larger and I will add my articulator to this. OK, we'll go in here and hit edit. And then we're going to create a chart. OK, first things first, we got to build some data pieces to, to put on the page here. I have a, a plot. So first thing I'm going to do is, oops, I'm going to fix my things here. Put this up here to gender and this up here to data. There's two link things that we're talking about. There are links for the chord chart, which is different than the links up here. So this link is doing. I the think the question was referring to a that link. Okay, yeah, this link. Oh, the, yeah, okay. This link is linking different data points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw first a, just a scatter plot. So I'm going to put um, the. I'm going to grab G, uh, V1. I'm going to add it to the X axis. And I'm going to add V2 to the to the or sorry Y axis and the X axis. Next, what I'll do is I'll make a mark and add a mark to the page. So these are all. So all I did was add uh, the two dimensions to each of the axes and then I link them together here. Now. Um, these each of these data points. Uh, how do I, I? I probably don't want to do that. I want to make one of these categorical. Hold on. Can I do that now? Is that changing at all? I don't want the. I don't want the axis to do this. I want this axis to do something else. This might not be the best data for this one. Yeah, we'll try it out. It's too much. I'm I'm thinking there's too much data here, so let hold on a second. Let me just see if I can pare down some data. Let me find a, a different data set here that do a better job exemplifying this. Um, this might be better. I'm going to change my data set here just to make it easier to to do this link demo here. All right, let's let's do let's do something we all know and love, which is time bound data. So let me remove this chart. I'm going to put date here. These are some dates, and then I'm going to add sales values. So a simple list of this was the date, that was the number of sales, and I'm just going to plot that over time and show you that that time bound data. OK, so we'll do that. We'll start with this one. Turn this into Charticulator. I'll make sure all of my data fields are in the fields section. Like this. We'll click on edit. Create chart. All right, now I'm going to put my dates on the X axis. It knows that those are dates and we'll write them out. And I know my sales will go on the Y axis. And then I will put my circles in the middle of the marks. Yeah, this looks better. OK, so now I've got the marks all over the page, right? So the links allows me to create relationships between each of the dots. So now if I click the links button, it'll allow me to create a line or a band between each of the links. So this in this case, I'm just going to make a line and I'm only going to I'm going to link everything on this particular chart and say create links. And all that does is it creates from one data point on the X axis, it just takes each mark or each glyph and says, I'm going to just link the next glyph together. So it's just going to try and draw a line between them. So now I can adjust these things. I could even do some crazy stuff where I add the sales number to the size of the of the bubble so I can make bigger bubbles when it goes higher and smaller bubbles when it goes lower. Um, I can even add in stuff that I like to do here as well. For a styling standpoint, I like to maybe change these the the symbols here. I'm going to add a stroke to them. I'm going to add a stroke of white and I'm going to make it a little bit larger here. So let's go a little bit larger here. So what what that does is when I look at these data points, you can see that the little white mark there, if I add a stroke on there, if I actually made it higher, you can see that it actually puts a little perimeter, a little edge around each one of the circles. And so I get this little nice line that comes in and it has a little a break and then it has the circle and it keeps going. So this is kind of a, another way, a, a technique you can use for that as well. I can change the link color so it doesn't have to be blue. I could make that another one like a gray or I could make it thicker as well. So I could increase the thickness of that and I could even make it uh, transparent 
So if I wanted to, so I could change it. So it's a little bit thinner. So that's how you would build a link. So I'm actually able to build a link between data points. Now that's one way of doing a link. Another way of doing a link, which I'll remove this one. Let's get rid of the symbols here. Let's get rid of the chart. That. I'll just reset it here. Let's reset another one. So I'll do another one here. Uh, how do I reset this? I want to reset my visual. Say, all right, let's edit another one. So we're going to do another one now. So now what I'll do is I'll put two charts together. And so now you can actually create links between different charts. So if I have this plot segment here, I'm going to make one plot segment on the left hand side and I can make another plot segment. Let's call it a line. I'll make another plot segment over here. So now I have two different elements. Actually, I should get rid of this other one here first. I'm in this one. I'll grab the again the uh, the dates. And then I'll put my sales on a bar that we're going to add to the chart. So let's put a bar in here. Let's put that bar up like this. So now I have a bar chart and then I want the sales number to be the width. And it's very fat, so I think I want to instead I want to change this chart here. To. It's stacking on the wrong direction, so I need to change the plot segment so it stacks in the right direction here. So I want. Um, Why is my bar doing a weird thing here? I don't want overlap. I want scaffold in the vertical line. Somehow I've boogered this up again. Try that again. Here, we want our dates stacking in the X direction. Left, bottom. Yeah, stack in the Y. Okay, that's what I wanted. All right, now I've got that. Now I can drag my mark there. Now I can add my dates. Perfect. And then I can get my sales. Okay, I did it out of order. Okay, those are my bars. So what I can do now is I can make another plot segment. So if I want another segment of plotting, I could add a little plus box here. And then I have to, I can add another plot segment. And this will let me graph something else on the page. And I may want, in this case, I may want to add uh, another square or something like that. So if I'll add a square to this, this is going to make individual blocks here, and I'm going to make the width of these blocks a specific uh, height. Let's go with a height. Let's go with uh, 10 pixels. So now each of these bars are a specific height, and then I can also add data to that and make the width different. So now I have like a tornado kind of plot. So what I may want to do is I may want to join the data between the two different plot types. So now what I can do is I can click the links item again, and now it will ask me to join these two different plot segments. And then instead of using a line this time, I'm going to use the band feature. So if I click band and hit create links, it will then join the various elements together based on ordering. So now everything's out of order. <laughs> they're all matching, but they're matching in a very funny way. So now what I can do is I can sort these items. So if I click on this chart, I should be able to minimize this. We can go down here and we can sort these by order here. Let's sort this one by not filter. So many settings in here. Alignment. Where's my order by? Oh. And they keep changing features on me. They keep moving stuff around. There was an order by on this one. Left, middle, nope, I don't want middle. I want to be in left. I don't want packing. I want it to sort. Where did they put my sort thing? Hmm. Okay, I must be missing something. There's a property here that lets you sort this at some point. I don't know where it went, uh, but it, it could sort the axis. It should let you sort the axis by something. I don't know why it's not letting me do it. Start, end, tick, format, auto, select. Anyways, position. No, nope, that's not what I want. Hmm, okay. Well, I must be missing a feature here somewhere. So it should let you sort by average of date. That way it could uh, 
grab that sorting option for you so you could sort down that list there. Um, that's domain, start, end, range, average. These domains are not getting me what I want either. Okay, never mind. Anyways, well, that's how you would create a link between them. You can also adjust the link property so the link can be shaped in a way. So you can change the opacity to be something lighter or darker, uh, thinner or thicker. So if you want a, uh, more of a faint transition, you can also change it to different types, a bezier, which I think also lets you uh, change the, the how the line is being uh, curviness of it. So you can actually add some additional curviness to it so you can adjust that as well. And then you can see linkages between those different data marks. So that's kind of in general what you could do there. You can get a little bit crazy with it. Now that you have it all linked up, you can move stuff around. You can adjust it and make it in different directions. So you can do all kinds of other interesting things here where you can um, stack things in very odd fashions or whatever that may be. So you can do kinds of all kinds of other crazy kind of graphing things where it's orienting things in various ways. So another kind of interesting technique you can use around linking different data parts. But the idea is as long as you have two objects, you know, uh, two different shapes, you can then link those shapes together. And then when you click on the linking item as well, you can actually adjust where it attaches to. So I can attach it to this other side. So I can have it come from the edge of the bar or the top of the bar. And you can actually adjust where that thing attaches to the shape. So it kind of gives you some more alternative options there as well. So kind of. If you can dream it, you can kind of build it here. So <laughs> it gives you kind of tons of flexibility of kind of whatever you want to build. This makes no sense at all data visualization, digital data visualization size, uh, but it it's just kind of fun to look at and you can play with it and, and adjust what's going on there. Cool. Other questions? Uh, yes, one, one last question. Uh, have you ever implemented any articulator visual in a real scenario? And what was the reason you couldn't reach it with standard visuals? And maybe can we see it just in case uh, it is possible to see it? I, let me think of where I've so, so stuff where I, a lot of the times when I'm using things, the a lot of these are out of normal ex examples. So this bar chart one was actually a real example. So this was a real example where I wanted to put the, the customer literally asked me, hey, I want data on the bar and I need it to look like this. So they actually had me take the data points and put them directly on the bar because that's what someone was asking for. So this was a real example that I did at one point. You can't build this kind of chart with a normal bar chart. You just can't do it. So a lot of times what I find is when I'm using Charticulator is I'm building somewhat standard visuals, but I'm tweaking them slightly. Um, another good example that I've done is something that we like to call position and direction. I don't know if I have data sets that support this. Um, see if I have anything here that would give me. Financials. Let's try this. I'm going to try. Uh, I might need your guys help here to help me write some DAX here very quickly on the fly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a country calculation here. And let's make a table. So this is the, the concept of position and direction is very relevant when you're talking about uh, what is impacting my business. And so if I bring a country here and I bring in sales, and then I, I want to maybe do like a percent change, right? A percent change calculation on this. And I think I have date time fields turned off. So I'm gonna try and build a quick percent change calculation based on the date calendar here. So let's do a new measure. Let's calculate, uh, calculate the uh, sum of sales, sum of sales, is that right? Yeah, sum of sales. And then we're going to say uh, we're going to calculate it by same period last year. And then I'm going to give it the date field of the date column. Financials date. Let's see if this will actually calculate. And I for missed a parenthesis here. All right. So let's see if this is going to give me the what I want. OK, good. OK, so that's the same period last year. Let's do a new measure here. Year to date, calculate. Oh, actually, I can do year to date, right? Total year to date. Sales. Our chart, financials, sales. OK, and then we need to send it a list of dates. So we're going to give it the next thing, which is the column for the dates range. Dates is from date. That comes from financials. Financials. And go down to the date column. 
OK, so I have a year to date. OK, I have a year to date and a prior year. Close enough. <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go with it for now. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll try and go with this one. So this is prior year, prior year to date, and then current year to date. So to get a percent change of that, we would then use these two measures. So I'm going to create a new measure here where I'll say, uh, let's do new minus old divided by old. So this would be a percent change. And that would be, uh, let's see your new, which would be year to date. Minus old, that would be prior year to date. Divided by old, prior year to date. All right, very fast, rough and dirty. Uh, there's a percent change calculation, boom. Okay, wonderful, we got a number there. So we'll turn that into percentage, good to go. Wow, we're really up, good, good sales this year. Okay, anyways. So now what we want to do is we want to graph what is our year to date value and then what was the percent change of that value. So this is another chart that I've done in the past where um, I've built these things. So I'll re remove these two other data fields. We just want the year to date and the percent change. So now what I want to do is I want to graph down the middle of my chart just the countries. And on the left hand side, I want to show a bar chart of all the uh, total value of sales. That's my position. That's how much we've done. Uh, production wise and then I want to look on the right hand side what is the percent change how much does that value change comparative to a prior year value so now that I have this data table together I can then uh, go into charticulator and I'm going to move all my fields up here so I have all the data fields together go in here and hit edit create a chart and so the first thing I need to do is figure out what am I going to graph on the charts together so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create Delete all of your charts. I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to create a plot segment that is a 2D, a one line segment. Go from the top to the bottom, and I'm going to add my country to this. So it's going to label me my countries. Then I'll also add to this a text box in the middle here. Oops, text box in the middle. And then I will also add country. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I want this to be a, uh, a chart where I have, let's turn off the visibility of that layer. So on the plot segment, I got to go down here to visible, turn that off. Okay, so now I've got all my countries labeled right down the middle and they're ordered correctly. Next, I want to build a bar chart on the left hand side that's going to show me the total value of each of those data points. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a, a guide in the X direction. I'm going to make a guide across the entire page. And now I've got this nice thirds view of the data here. Next, I'll grab a plot segment for 2D region. And I'm going to go build that here on the, oops, not going to do that yet. I'm going to click a new glyph. Then I'm going to create my plot segment on the left hand side. OK. Uh, for here, we're going to stack across the Y direction. And then next we will add the country to the Y axis. I'll add my bar rectangle in here. Those are my different bar heights and that will be my year to date value. So now I have year to date totals so I can look at the impact of each of those year to date values against each uh, value, uh, each column there. OK. The next half of this is build the other side of the chart. The next side of the chart would be building you a uh, percent change. So I build another uh, glyph here. I'll grab yet another plot segment on the right hand side. I'll again grab my country and add it here to the, actually I don't want to do that yet. I want to change the glyph here. Plot segment, I want to stack in the Y direction again. I'll add my country yet again. And this time I'll add another bar. And then this time I'll use the percent change. And why did that go to nothing? That should not be so small. Oh, my demos are just not happy today. I don't want it to go to 2 million. I want, I want it to only go to uh, 200 on one of these. Which one is it? This one? All right, I did something wrong on my glyphs here. Try that again. I made a new glyph, glyph one, glyph two. Yep, glyph, good. This one should be year to date. This one should be percent change. Oh, gone it. Why is this thing giving me all kinds of problems today? I'm so sorry, <laughs> this is so silly. It should not be giving all these issues. All right, let's go back to my chart here. Glyph number two, grab my bar, drop it in there, year to date. Not on the y-axis, I need to put that on the bar. All 
my axis back. Minus this. Erase the uh, data point there on the y axis. Plot set two. Data general line. Oh, oh, there it is. First country x axis is year to date. There you go. Erase that. So I want to go back to my glyph, add my year to date. Should give me my bar height. What the heck? Something's messing with this. Something's, I've got something wrong on my computer. It's doing something weird. not acting like I expect it to. Sorry about that. Let me try one, one more time here. Anyways, it's not a problem, Mike. If you want to <laughs> speak, uh, if you want to describe it uh, uh, speaking, let's say without showing it, uh, I think it's OK in any case. Yeah, what it should do is it should be able to let you have these different bars on the different axes, and it should give you uh, the ability to stack two different bar charts so that the Canadian data should show the impact, like the total number of sales, and then which of the bars were changing over time. So it gives you kind of like that, okay, not every part of my business is equal, and mm -hmm. if I could show you the graph, <laughs> potentially here, I'll draw it, I'll draw it out. If it, if it worked correctly, I'll just draw it on the screen here. What Canada okay. should do is you should have a bar that's like this <clears throat> that represents the total number of sales. And then what you'll typically find is there's uh, your above or below some sort of axis down the middle <clears throat> on the on the right hand side. Take a drink of water. And then <clears throat> on the right hand side, you'd have uh, bars that would potentially go uh, backwards in time. So it'd be something like this and be a negative value or potentially a positive value or a negative value. So what happens here when you have okay. data like this is you can say, OK, I can order the bars by sales on the left hand side. So you know this is the best sales that we had, lower sales, lower sales. And so when you sort order these things, you can then sort them like this. So you can say, OK, Canada had the most amount of sales. And then when you build uh, the other half of the position, you can then say, oh, look, Canada sales were, were highest this year, but it was a negative value. So that was a bad thing. Right. And then you can actually do some coloring where you actually say, oh, sales were up a certain amount of percent or the sales were down uh, in Germany by X number of percent. Right. So what you're looking for are in this insightful thing is, you know, the left hand side is just dollars. The right hand side is percent change year over year. So even though you had their largest category, you know, you may actually need to focus your attention on this data category. Right. If you see large negative values for your biggest sellers, that's where you want to focus your attention. So yes. it's a similar chart that I've drawn before where I've been able to make it work before. I don't know why I can't get all the settings right. They must have adjusted some stuff on me, but that's kind of the, the principle of this visual. So these are kind of two real world examples that I've done where I'm I'm doing standard visuals. I'm not building anything crazy, but it's like a tweak, right? It's the things that you can't do in desktop. It's a little bit different than what desktop can provide you. So, ugh. Sorry thank, about that. thank you very Good much for uh, for all these demos. I'm trying to. I was trying hard. That's, sometimes doing live demos gives you a little bit of pain, and today has been one of my painful days. <laughs> so sorry. Roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your time today. Uh, that's kind of uh, charticulate in a nutshell. If you want to see other visuals, uh, or if you want to look at some of the demos that I have, uh, I do have a GitHub repo. So if you want, uh, you can go grab. Uh, and I'll click the link here. There's a whole repo around GitHub just in general that you can go find. There's a whole bunch of templates there. Uh, these all correspond with the YouTube video channel as well, so you can use those additionally. So I'll throw that in the chat window in case you want to see it. Thanks. And if you uh, if you send us the slides, we will be pub publishing them uh, on our uh, user group platform. Sounds good. I'll send you those as well. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Goodbye, see you on uh, uh, May Day uh, the 18th. Sounds Goodbye, good. everyone. Cheers. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.